John chapter four, uh, hands down, probably my favorite passage in John's gospel. This passage here that you see, this interaction between Jesus and the Samaritan woman that he meets at the well. Uh, one of the commentators said that there is nowhere else in the Bible that you see the character of God put on display as richly as you see in this passage. And I'd agree, probably outside of the passion, this is just one of the greatest displays of who God is, how he interacts with humanity and what it is that he wants to give to them. In this passage, you see Jesus leaving his disciples. They go off into a town to go and get some food. And Jesus is on his way to Galilee. To get to Galilee, he has to pass through Samaria. Samaria is this uh, region which has got lots of rich religious history. It's got uh, lots of, of uh, instances that it pops up in the Old Testament, lots of times where God reveals himself to his people through the Old Testament. These, these times are, are located in and around Samaria. But through the Old Testament, you also see a bitter rivalry uh, stem up between the Jews and the Samaritans. The Samaritans would say that they uh, find their heritage from Jacob. The Jews try to dismiss that and push them away and ostracize them out of the people of God. But they would say that they believe in God. It's just that they don't have the rich uh, history and the law that the Jews would hold onto. Jesus is traveling through Samaria on his own to the heat of the day, the middle of the day, and he gets to a well and he's thirsty. There's a woman at the well. She's there on her own. And she's got a big, large water jar. She's come to fill up uh, for the supply for the day. It's a strange time for her to be out uh, getting water in the day, though. It's the hottest time of the day. It's the middle of the day. These folks would have needed water from the start of the day. So already you get hints that she is maybe trying to avoid other people by being there on her own, knowing that other people wouldn't be there. Next week, we're going to have another look through the chapter and see just how Jesus interacts with this woman and how so much uh, can be learned from this interaction. But I just want us to focus in just for these next few minutes on the big idea in this passage. What is John trying to show us? Jesus asked the woman for a drink and she replies to him, quite shocked that a Jewish man would want to ask a Samaritan woman for a drink like that's just unheard of. And Jesus turns to her and says this, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And this exchange carries on. She kind of humors him. I want to know a little bit more about what this living water is. Jesus says that this living water, if you drink of this living water, you will never thirst again. Anyone who drinks of this, the water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water well enough to attain a life. Jesus is saying, I'm not interested in a drink from you. I want to give you a drink. The drink that I want to give you, the water I want to give you, will quench your thirst forever. And again, she humours him. She plays a little bit and she asks for where she can get this living water from. She's thinking, well, if I can get this water, I won't have to come out to the well every day and make this journey on my own. But Jesus really pulls her in. It makes it so clear who he is, who this person is that she's talking to. This isn't a joke. She tries to divert the conversation with talking about religion. She starts talking about where it is that, that, that God will be worshipped, which mountain should God be, would be worshipped on. And she's trying to dodge things a little bit, but Jesus is insistent on revealing himself to her. At the end of this interchange, she asks about where the Messiah will come from. Who will he be? She wants this living water, but she knows that it will only come from the Christ. Jesus turns to her and replies this, I who speak to you am he. He reveals himself as the Christ. Here's a few startling things in this passage. Remember a few weeks ago, we looked at Nicodemus, a Jewish man who comes to Jesus in the dead of night. And here we have a Samaritan woman coming to Jesus in the brightness of day. You can see the contrast that John is trying to draw. All the way through John's gospel, you see Jesus revealing himself to, to be who he is and the Jews just being so blind to it. He shows himself through miracles. I'm God. I am the Christ that you've been waiting for. And they still can't see it. And here he is with a Samaritan woman, probably the lowest of the low in the eyes of Jewish people at the time, revealing himself clearly to be the Christ. And she believes him. 
she picks up her jar, she runs back to the town and she tells everyone that she can meet that she has met the Christ. Remember, that is the great thread that John is pulling through this gospel. He wants us to believe and believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the Son of God, the promised Messiah, the one that all history has been waiting for, the one that all history has been, been leading up to, to being revealed. And he revealed himself here to a Samaritan woman and he wants to reveal himself to you and I. Not, not as a nice man, not as someone who does good things, but as God, the Christ, the one in whom all the promises of God find their yes and their amen. If you're a Christian, you know him, you know God, you know the Christ and you have received this living water that he offers. You have received it. You have it now. This is talked about so much in the Old Testament. The prophets look forward to, to this, this uh, renewing, fresh, uh, cleansing water that would come with the Messiah. And Jesus says, it's here and it's yours to have. Folks, within us all, if we are Christians, we have this living water which breathes life into us, eternal life into us, confirms our eternality, which will be with God forever. So this week, let us give thanks for that. Let us recognise what God has done in us, that he hasn't just done a, a small change in making us from, from non-Christians to Christians. No, he has given us eternal life. He has quenched our eternal thirst. So let's not run to the things of the world to try and fill the gap, to try and, and take away the thirst. Doing that is just drinking salt water. We will be thirsty again. Let us draw near to Jesus. Let us drink from him, from his word. Let us commune with him and let us give thanks that we know the Christ, the saviour of the world, the promised Messiah, God himself.